The internet continues to go bananas over a rumor that Tom Brady wants to be traded to the Miami Dolphins. We hit the voicemail line, and it's a double mock draft Monday. Let's go. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bucks Nation, and welcome to the Locked On Bucks Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko, joined as always by my co-host David Harrison. Both of us cover your Buccaneers for SB Nation's BucksNation.com. And when we aren't here or there, you can find us on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, at D Harrison 82, and at Bucks underscore Nation. Yeah, thanks again for making us your first view or your first listen every single day here at the Locked On Bucks podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. So there's rumors that just won't die, but sometimes, James, rumors are just rumors. This one spearheaded by NESN's Dan Arnold saying that Tom Brady is trying to force a trade from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to the Miami Dolphins. This all started in a tweet that you covered for BucksNation.com. So go ahead and, and tell us just about the initial tweet. All right. Yeah. So what had happened was Dale Arnold, who now covers the Boston Bruins for Nesson, uh, used to do some work in radio and all this. Uh, well-connected within New England sports. He tweets out, quote, would not be surprised if Tom Brady didn't play for the Buccaneers next season. Try a little further south. Thanks, Dale. Yeah, and of course, that's Miami, right? That's that's yes. the only team it can be. So, James, my initial response or reaction to this whole report was that he said next season. We're already well into the 2022 NFL season, and I understand that every new year, it takes people like a month, month and a half but if you're an established media personality, I think you should be able to, to discern between next season and this season. So I took this to mean 2023, at which time Tom Brady is a free agent and he can go wherever he he damn well likes. But I mentioned that to the Bucks Nation group. Evan Wanish, one of our newer writers over at BucksNation.com, said, no, David, he actually means this season. And I said, really? Where was that? He said, so he sent me this radio link. Yeah. We have clarification here from Dale. Uh, I said, hey, Dale, it's Tyler Devitt from oh. WEI. Christian oh. Fourier is wondering oh. if your Brady tweet was about 2022 or next season as 2023. Dale responded, quote, please say verbatim. <laughs> this <co> <laughs> Dale responded verbatim. He said, this coming season, they're working on it. I said, can I say that on air verbatim? He said, yes, sure. They might, but they might not get it done. Whatever. This is they're working, the on, it. They're working on it. They're, they're working on it. it. They're working on it. They're working on it. They're working on it. Dale Arnold, formerly of WEI, believes that Tom Brady and the Miami Dolphins are working on bringing Dale. him to Miami for 2022. Of course they are. But, but that's Dale telling these guys what he means, and he basically says James that he means the 2022 NFL season, which is not in fact next season. That is this season. Um, no. That's that's not going to be a thing. James Yarko of BucksNation.com wrote up a, a column for BucksNation.com, of course, uh, that is literally titled, and I don't, this isn't a, a quote because I can't remember exactly, but basically what's, what's titled, no, Tom Brady is not going to Miami um, for a litany of reasons. And basically, James, I'm just going to tell people what you've already written. Uh, his tweet, again, and, and we answered these questions when Tom first quote unquote came out of retirement, which he never retired, so he didn't come out of anything. He just changed his mind to not go into retirement i still stand by that take uh he says in his tweets to 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 play for the tampa bay buccaneers like i'm not i'm not quoting the tweet but basically he says i'm coming back to play football with the tampa bay buccaneers i have unfinished business with the tampa bay buccaneers two pictures are attached to the tweet saying he's coming back one of them is him and his offensive line formation whatever all wearing bucks uniforms obviously and his family wearing buccaneers clothing uniform items Bruce Arians already said at the NFL scouting combine that if Tom Brady is playing football, he's playing football for the Bucs, not the 49ers, not anybody else for the Buccaneers. And oh, by the way, Bruce Arians is doing interviews down at the league meetings right now, James. He's talked to Steve Weiss earlier uh, this weekend and mentioned and, and they talked about a lot of things. And one of the things they talked about is how happy they are 
that Tom is back because they don't have to worry about their next step at quarterback because their next step at quarterback for 2022, James Jarko, is Tom Brady. Yeah, uh, this is stupid. Nothing about this makes any kind of sense whatsoever. Yeah. Tom Brady is actively recruiting people to come back to the Buccaneers like Ryan Jensen and Leonard Fournette and Carlton Davis. He has reached out to other free agents like Julio Jones, trying to recruit them to Tampa Bay. The Before he even made his announcement, he got into his group chat with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and said, hey, guys, I'm coming back. None of that happens if he's trying to force his way to the Miami Dolphins. Tom Brady is not getting traded to the Dolphins. And, and what Dale said later in that, that interview clip that you played the beginning of is that Miami is talking to Tom Brady, working this out. Now they throw in the ever popular, it may not happen. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the, the CYA, you know, kind of asterisk there, you know, to cover his own butt that when this doesn't come to fruition, people can't come after, oh, well, they just couldn't come to an agreement. The Dolphins can't talk to Tom Brady. Yeah. That's tampering. Yeah. There are fines and punishments for that. They would have to talk to the Buccaneers in which Jason Light would go, uh -huh. <laughs> and that's the end of the conversation. Like, that's it. So yeah. whatever Dale has decided he needs to do to get himself in the limelight here, Stop it. Now, you want to bust out this narrative next offseason when Tom Brady's a free agent as of now? That is, if the Bucs don't work out an extension and try to free up more cap space, whatever the case may be, fine. Talk about it next season. But to me, all of this stems from the fact that Tom Brady had looked into allegedly purchasing a minority share in the Dolphins. Now, all of a sudden, it has run to he wants to be the quarterback of the Miami Dolphins. No, it's not happening period. So people just need to just let it go. Let it go. All right. It is a double dose of Mock Draft Monday with one from Bucks Nation's Mike Kiwak and another from one of our listeners. But first, we have to talk about Built Bars and Built Puffs because Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They are a treat and they, like many other treats, are covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite. They have some incredible flavors. Churro, coconut, marshmallow, banana cream pie. They got a brownie batter one that's out now in puff form. They are going to be your new favorite. All Built Bars, Puffs, and the originals are covered in 100% real chocolate. They are low-calorie, high-protein. These bars coming in at 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, 17 grams of protein. They are all delicious and new flavors coming out all the time. If they think a flavor might be good, they're going to make it, and then they're going to figure out how to make it good for you. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and you're going to get 15% off your order. Again, promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thanks again, Bucks fans, for making us your first listen or your first view every single day. Make sure you're also following the Locked On NFL podcast, Locked On experts covering the biggest stories from around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and it's available wherever you get podcasts, just like the Locked On Bucks podcast. David Harrison and James Jarko on Twitter at dharrison82 at jarko underscore Bucks. Mock Draft Monday, and we're starting off with a Twitter submission from Ricky at Destin for Greatness on Twitter, and James, here is his mock draft sent to us again on Twitter, a four-rounder. I don't know if he did the seventh-round picks or, or not, uh, but he sent us the first four rounds. We're going to go over these. First round, number 27, he takes safety Lewis Seen out of Georgia, uh, a guy who's become a very popular pick for Buccaneers uh, fans and, and, and mock drafts alike. Uh, in the second round, at number 60, he takes tight end Trey McBride out of Colorado State. Uh, tight end number one or number two, depending on which big board you subscribe to. Third round, he takes number 91 running or at number 91. He takes running back James Cook out of Georgia. Dalvin's little brother, Florida State people will still be mad that Dalvin didn't get drafted. Fourth round, number 133. He takes interior defensive lineman Ioma Uwazurike. 
Wazirike. I always have a problem with that out of Iowa State. Again, no seventh rounders included. But James, what do you think of these four picks? I love all of these. He hit on every need that the Buccaneers have. You know, and I, I realize people are going to say, well, why would you take safety in the first round? They just got a safety. Well, Logan Ryan's kind of that Swiss Army knife, right? He's going to be able yeah. to play all over the place in Todd Bowles' defense. This way you have a true safety back there filling the hole left by Jordan Whitehead, tag teaming with Antoine Winfield Jr., and you have Logan Ryan that could go anywhere on the field. We saw plenty of three safety sets by Todd Bowles during last season because they wanted Edwards and Whitehead on the field at the same time. So I absolutely love that pick. Still have a need at tight end, even if they do bring back Gronk. So I love the Trey McBride pick. Uh, I'm I'm a big James Cook fan. Yeah, I realize I talk a lot about Haskins and, and how much I like him, but I would not be upset in the least if James Cook was the running back there to back up Leonard Fournette and then addressing a need along the defensive line. I at Destin for greatness again, fantastic job. Uh, I love this. I love this mock. Yeah, I'm just going to gloss over the fact that you didn't even attempt to say the fourth round pick's name. Listen, uh, Uwazarike? I Ioma Uwazarike. Here's what I don't like about mock drafts like this one, because what do we see in this mock draft? We only see Bucks picks, and and, uh, and that's fine. True. But here's yeah. what always happens. Eh, I'd rather have Sauce Gardner at number 27, James. I'd, I, that's who I'd rather <laughs> have. I'd rather have Sauce at 27. I don't see the board. Right. I don't see the board. I have no idea who was on the board when 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 Destin for Greatness on Twitter again um, made the made these picks. So I'm not going to comment with who I would rather have because I have no idea how the board fell. But in a vacuum, I like all these players. I don't think the Buccaneers are going to prioritize safety in the first round. But again, I have no idea who's available. You know what I mean? So outside of knowing who's available, I can't complain about the Lewis scene pick whatsoever. Another mock draft that I don't know who was available when these players were picked. So we're just going to take it in a vacuum for the Buccaneers itself is a full seven rounder. And actually it expands a little bit because James, Mike Keywalk, our buddy at BucksNation.com, uh, first round number 27 overall, he trades that pick to the Super Bowl champion, Detroit Lions picking at 32. Um, <laughs> Those words have never been said together ever, nor will they ever be said together. Yeah. Ever. So obviously a 32nd pick traded to the Lions for in that Jared Goff deal for uh, and Matt Stafford going to the Rams to win the Super Bowl. Anyway, Mike Kiwak has the Buccaneers trading number 27 to the Detroit Lions for picks 32, last pick in the first round, and pick 97, which comes back around in the third round, basically citing the Buccaneers have a very limited amount of draft picks, so they need to get some more. I like that move. Again, depending on how the board falls, I like trading back. We're pretty much a team trade back every year, though. With the number 32 overall pick in the first round, he has the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking defensive back Daxton Hill out of Michigan. Second round, pick number 60. Rick's going to like this. Tight end Trey McBride out of Colorado State. Going to the third round now, Buccaneers number 91 overall pick. Defensive tackle Matthew Butler out of Tennessee. Uh, the 33rd round pick, number 97 that they got from Detroit, remember, in that in that trade for number 27 overall. Offensive guard Marquise Hayes out of Oklahoma. Fourth round, number 133, running back Kyron Williams out of Notre Dame. Seventh round, number 248, punter Jordan Stout out of Penn State which means Bradley Pinion is not getting his money. He is going elsewhere. And then seventh round compensatory pick number 261, the second to last pick in the 2022 NFL draft linebacker edge rusher, Kyron Johnson. So you have Kyron and Kyron. I'm not sure if that's the per- proper use of those vowels, but Kyron Johnson out of Kansas. What say you, Mr. Yarko? Is is being the 261st pick in the draft the worst thing that could possibly happen? Because you are one pick away from getting the parade and <laughs> being forever known as Mr. Irrelevant. Like, who's yeah. more irrelevant than Mr. Irrelevant? The guy taken one pick before him. <laughs> no. um, I Again, I really like this mock as well. I think, uh-huh. you know, again, you get some secondary help. And and like I said, Logan Ryan's kind of that Swiss Army knife, but I like what Daxton Hill could offer this team. Yeah. I already talked about, you know, it's it's the Spider-Man meme. Mike and Destin for Greatness pointing at each other. Second round, Trey McBride. Uh, you're addressing the trenches there at number 91 with Matthew Butler. I like that move. Um, Marquise Hayes, 
I don't know. Again, we don't know how the board fell. I've seen him go a lot higher than number yeah. 97. So I don't know if he would be there, but what an addition that would be. I love Kyron Williams. You, you know, our listener, longtime listeners know my son's a Notre Dame fan. So yeah. we watch a lot of Notre Dame games and, and I really like what I've seen out of him. He's kind of a, I don't really know how to describe him. You said that his, his pre draft or his his NFL comp was Deion Lewis. I don't know yeah. if I quite see that. And he yeah. plays a lot faster than his forty time, but he's shifty. He's very he's talented. He's he's hard to bring down. Uh, Jordan Stout, don't love that pick. Uh, and then yeah. Kyron, Kyron Johnson. I hope he can play special teams. Yeah, listen, uh, Mike actually when he was doing his his seven round mock draft dropped in a DM with me and and our buddy Gabe. You know how how risky it was to actually put a punter or a, or a kicker, any, anybody that kicks a football for a living in a mock draft, let's say a big buccaneer. So I give Mike credit for being brave enough to do that. Um, going all the way back to the top, look, I actually think Daxton Hill probably brings more to the top bowls defense than what uh scene does. Now what scene does really well, and he does better than Daxton Hill. I just think Daxton has a little bit more versatility. Uh, yeah, Trey McBride, obviously you love that pick. Matthew Butler bolstering the 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 defensive line, and then you go six picks later and you bolster the offensive line. You can't hate any of that. Kyrie Williams, honestly, that's the most interesting pick of this entire mock draft for me comparing to other mock drafts is Kyron Williams because what can he be? I think if, if you're if you're drafting Kyron Williams, you're probably not bringing back Giovanni Bernard, right? Or if you do, it's going to be on a post-draft, very cheap veteran contract. Basically, hey, dude, come back and maybe see if you can't win a ring. You're probably not going to do much else than that. Uh, but with Leonard Fournette coming back with Keyshawn Vaughn already on the roster, Kyron is 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 kind of that third, you know, called that third gear, right? You got the you got the muscle guy that can do some receiving. You got the 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 smaller guy who's a little shiftier, uh, trying to prove himself. And then you got this guy who's basically kind of a joystick player. And yeah, he better run faster than his four six five forty time because if you're five foot nine and you run a four six five, you're not playing football anywhere but Madden. But he definitely does run faster, like you said. Um, look, I agree with Mike's pick of Jordan Stout because I do think that Bradley Pinion makes too much money for a team like this one to really continue to pay him that much money. And I don't think he, he really, you know, the, the days of him being arguably the best punter in the NFL, I think are gone. So, so why not go get a kid out of Penn state? Uh, the Buccaneers have done really well drafting guys out of Penn state. So, you know, Jordan Stout, probably an all pro punter by the end of his first contract. I just, I, I don't love it from the fact that you know, we're we're two years removed from talking about how great Bradley Pinion is. And yeah, yeah, he had he had a down year. I'm not gonna question that at all. And you know, makes makes two point nine million dollars. I just I don't think that last year was indicative of the punter that Bradley Pinion is. Yeah. And I honestly expect a bounce back from him. Yeah. Now, if they decide to go cheaper and go with a seventh round kid out of Penn State, then more power to him. But it would honestly surprise me. Bradley Pinion's not part of this team. Yeah, James Jarko is a Bradley Pinion guy. Julio yeah. Jones, a little bit more than two years removed from the last time he was really, really good. But I'm going to tell you why he needs to come back to the NFC South. And I'm going to do so thanks to our friends, our partners, who have a product that I use literally every single day. James Jarko. I don't know why I'm saying your last name today, but I'm doing it. Uh, I started taking Athletic Greens, James, because I love starting my day with a vitamin boost but I hate taking vitamins because honestly, and James, you know my memory, I never remember to grab the pill bottle in the morning. It's not part of my morning routine, so making it part of my routine is really hard. But I do fill up my water bottle every morning, so drinking my vitamins fits right into my existing routine. And with one scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sources, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens, which I had to Google what that is, but it's really interesting to help me start my day right or start your day right personally. I mix mine with six ounces of pineapple juice and six ounces of water. I get the vitamins plus the added benefit of the juice with a little natural sugar first thing in the morning. Athletic Green supports better sleep quality and recovery, supports mental clarity and alertness, and it costs you less than $3 a day so you can invest in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit if you're one of those people. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into this next flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every single day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's what I got. That package was sweet. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com 
dot com slash NFL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Wrapping things up here on a Monday edition of the Locked On Bucks podcast. James Yarko, David Harrison on Twitter at JYarko underscore Bucks at D Harrison 80 dose. And look, David, the Buccaneers may not be done adding to the wide receiver room, but could they look to some veteran leadership in order to do so? We all know that I am fully on board the Olave train, but we do have a voicemail from one of our listeners asking about some potential wide receiver targets via free agency for the Buccaneers in 2022. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Hey guys, it is Sean from Tampa, first time caller, long time listener. Uh, listen, TV12 on social media, throwing the ball to Edelman. What does this mean? Uh, what are the contractual possibilities of this happening? Uh, conver- conversely, uh, Tom also shot a tweet out to Julio Jones, so it seems apparent that he is looking for that veteran replacement wide receiver uh, for AB. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this? Looking forward to your thoughts and, uh, have a great week. LFG, let's go fire the cannons. Go Bucks. All right, Sean, appreciate the phone call on Julian Edelman. No, it's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to (laughs) happen. I I don't see it happening until it happens. I am not going to entertain the idea that it could happen on Julio Jones. I do believe it could happen, James, and I do believe it should happen. I just don't think it will happen until right before the NFL draft, after the NFL draft. Like if you're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, you know, the the thing about this time of year, which is really interesting to me, is you don't have to report agreements as far as I know, right? And and, and maybe Greg Allman will out me for this. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But my understanding, like let's talk about Rob Gronkowski, right? Like we said last week pretty definitively, Gronk is coming back. That's what we believe. That's how we feel. That's what we understand from what we do and don't know. If they've agreed to a contract, if, if Gronk and the Bucks already understand Gronk is coming back, they don't have to say that they know he's coming back until a contract has been reached, right? And, and and they're going to sign a contract. Now, a lot of times that kind of stuff comes out, but what I'm getting at is if you're Julio Jones, you have some time. I guarantee you there's some people who are interested in bringing Julio onto their roster. But if I'm the Buccaneers, I don't stack my cupboards full of all these other free agents that necessarily need to come in until at least the last minute to make NFL teams kind of scramble around. Because right now, every NFL organization is in their war rooms or they're in their meeting rooms and they're kind of mock drafting and like, okay, what do the Bucks need? What do the Patriots need? What do the Dolphins need? Two picks ahead of us, one pick up ahead of us, all that stuff. The more you stock your shelves, the more easy, the easier it is for other teams to predict what you're going to do or what they think you're going to do. So I kind of keep some of these things low key and on the low until I absolutely have to report it. So I like Julio Jones as a potential post draft pickup depending on what happens with the receiver groups that they they draft, if they draft anybody. First, Julian Edelman. Uh, look, that video that was circulating, it was filmed yeah. over a year ago. That's that's the other thing that, that people really weren't talking about. The, the video that went viral of Tom Brady throwing the ball into the jugs machine, this Julian Edelman was filmed the same day. You yeah, everything looks the same, too. Like- yeah, same, you know, Brady's wearing the same clothes, same location, same weather, same everything. Uh, so yeah, Julian Edelman, that's a hard no for me, Julio Jones, that's a soft no. And I'll tell you why I'll tell you why, uh, first and foremost, I think he ends up in Indianapolis second, um, Julio Jones doesn't give this team anything that they don't already have. The only thing that he would bring would be a potential fill in for the first couple of weeks. If Godwin misses yeah. and you basically have to use him as sparingly as humanly possible until you get to January. And by then, you know, other guys will have emerged. So at this stage in Julio's career, and, and I, I respect Julio. I love his game. He's a, to me, a first ballot Hall of Famer, even though there's been so few wide receivers elected on the first ballot, I think Julio should be one of those guys. Um, he's not going to add anything to this team. He's really not. And I understand, you know, Brady was recruiting him and maybe he just wants another big red zone target. 
Maybe he wants somebody that can take some attention away from Godwin or Evans, though I don't think Julio is that guy anymore. Um, I just I don't see it as a wise use of what money the Buccaneers have. So I would pass on Julio, but I say it's a soft no because I'm not going to be disappointed if Julio joins the team. Yeah. I would just be concerned of the production that you are going to get from him. And I would be curious about the contract he would get. He obviously didn't really do anything for the Titans last year. He really hasn't done much for the Falcons over the course of the past couple of years. I just, to me, it's, it would, I would see, and I'd be like, all right, meh. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, it's been a rough go for Julio Jones and you hate to see it for him. Uh, but I agree with you. He doesn't bring anything that the team doesn't already have, but that's kind of why I want to wait till after the draft. Did they go out and get like a sky more or they get some, some Calvin Austin, the third, something like that. Then you can bring him in. You got Scotty Miller. Who's got the kind of that straight line speed, Tyler Johnson, who's a little bit of both. Uh, we'll see what his, his work ethic looks like after last season's debacle. He just adds a little bit more girth to the group, but uh, the contract thing is a big point. He's got to take obviously a very friendly team contract, probably one that he doesn't want to take, which honestly, might be another reason why it goes till after the NFL draft. He's going to see if a team misses out on all the wide receiver targets they wanted. So now they're a little bit, call it desperate, call it what you want, but maybe they're a little bit willing to pay out a little bit more than they were in the beginning. But yeah, no, I agree with everything you said, other than the fact that I want Julio on the team. Just going to let me some Julio Jones, and I want to see him beat the Falcons twice a year. I will say if they're going to sign him, they better do it before they sign Blaine Gabbert. That way he gets number 11. He didn't have number 11 in Tennessee. It was very strange seeing Julio Jones wear number two. He's going to wear number one. Why would he wear number one? I don't know. I just threw out a number there. Yeah. No, he needs to wear number 11, so sign him before you sign Gabbard, and that's how that's how that will work. Got it. So, um, with that, we also are Also, bring Larry Fitzgerald in. Well, then they have to fight to the death for number 11, and you're only going to end up with one of the receivers. Also, Larry gets number 11 before Julio does, and I will okay. die on that hill. Yeah, you don't need to die on the hill. Everybody will stand on the hill with you. Excellent. All Except right. Except for Julio, who's at the bottom of the hill wearing number two. That's Kyle Trask's number. Come yeah, on, well, man. Kyle can go to number seven. I don't know. No, that's, that's Lenny's man. number. <laughs> <laughs> We're all Kyle, Kyle can wear double zeros, all right? Double zero. Calm down, Josh. Grief. <laughs> Calm down, Josh. All right, we're getting out of here. Uh, thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or view of the day. Now make your second listen, the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It is free and available wherever you get your podcast. If you have a question, a concern, a topic, anything of the sort, you can give us a shout at 813-444-5841 or send us an email to LockedOnBucksPodcast at gmail.com. For David Harrison, I am James Yarko, and until we speak again, make sure you are checking out everything that we are doing over at BucksNation.com and follow along on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JayYarko underscore Bucks, at DHarrison82, and at Bucks underscore Nation. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, be good to one another, fire those cannons. Brady is not a dolphin. We thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked on Bucks.